My calculator is hungry for 666. I have to figure out an input using two hidden functions to calculate an output of 666. Part figuring out the rules, part doing math equations. It's right up my alley, but this is basically the perfect game for me. So I have a diamond function. You put a diamond in the number, input five, get 50, input one, get 10. Seems like we're multiplying the number by 10. If it's diamond 10, is it 100? All right, that's a simple function. But then we have the fork. This requires two numbers of input. If I do one fork one, I get one. If I do two, I get very hot because some of the keys are on fire. You can't access them, so I have to figure out what to do without them. Three fork three gets one, five fork five gets one. How about one fork zero? Infinity! Wow, so am I dividing? It appears that I am. Let's do one fork three just to be sure. Awesome, a great one to start it off with. So diamond multiplies by 10, fork does division. How do I get to 666? Well, it's simple. I know that 1998 divided by three is 666. So I could do diamond 1998, fork, diamond three. They're both multiplied by 10, then neither are multiplied by 10. How about this one? One, it gets me one. Three gets me three. Seven gets me seven. What is this? 10 gets me one. 13 gets me 31. Let's try 873. Yeah, I'm switching the order of the numbers. Well, too bad 666 backwards is also 666. What about the pitchfork? Another one. Nine, I just could be multiplying them. It seems to be simple multiplication. Let's do 18 fork 37. It's 666. But notice I didn't win because I have to use both. Well, so why don't I just do... Diamond 81 fork diamond 73. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could phrase it, but the same thing gets you there. I don't have many numbers to work with here. This is actually surprisingly accessible. It's like the game knew I was in the beginning of the video, wanted to work the viewers into an understandable solution. And then this looks like base seven. I'm going I'm to tell you right now. <laughs> I'm feeling a cool base seven vibe from this. Now we're just going to drop it on them. As in, I input a number in decimal and the output is the number in base seven. So if I was to input... 30, I think I would get 42. Listen, I'm not that much of a genius. There's just been base seven in one or two other levels in this game. This game likes base seven. I think it's been in one other level and then there was base eight and a couple others. What about the forks? Well, this looks like multiplication. Let me go nine by eight. This looks like more multiplication. Okay, diamond is base seven. Forking is multiplication. How do I get to 666? I can do 222 times three. So what does 222 convert to in base 10? The way to get that is to have two times seven squared, which gets me 98, plus two times seven, which is 14, which overall equals 112, plus two, which is 116. And I can't punch in 116. Well, 116 could be represented in base seven. So 47 plus seven is 56 plus six is of course, for some reason, the hardest part for me, 62 also on fire. But 62 could also be represented in base seven. It's 42 plus two, which is 44. 44 could also be represented in base seven as 28 plus four, which is 32. 32 could also be represented in base seven. That's uh, 23? 23 could also be represented in base seven. That's 17. That's a problem because 17 doesn't exist in base seven. It's like the equivalent of 1A in our current counting system. Well, I guess I never thought about the more simple answer of if I have 666 as a base seven number, what does that equal? So that's six times 49, which is 294 plus 42, which gets me a 336 plus six, 342. Well, that could be a base seven number. Three times 49 is 147. Four times seven is 28 plus 147. I think it's 175 hopefully. Plus two is 177. That's a pretty bad number there. This is by far the hardest one I've seen. Okay, maybe I should follow the train of eight again. Base eight representation of eight is 11. Base eight representation of 11 is 14. Of that is 20. Oh no. Oh yeah? Hold on. Eight to 11, eight to 14, eight to 20. Diamond, diamond, diamond eight. And then 20 times 33.3 gets me 666. Good lord, that was probably the one I struggled on the most. Damn. Yeah, all right, well done, well done. New equations. I went through a lot of iterations. I'm geeking out about that one. That was a good puzzle. All right, it looks like it's just multiplying by negative five. That one's pretty simple. How about forking? Mm, does it just squish the numbers together? 
It might. What if I do like 14, 4, 2, 142? It just literally uh, concatenates the numbers. So I just have to create the number six. Okay, well, I could just do diamond negative 1.2. Fork diamond negative 1.2. Fork, because you can do triple forks in this. Negative 1.2. Boom, three sixes. Much easier. A cool math fact, check it out if you like reading. Minus nine. I'm not subtracting 10, am I? I mean, I could be. I am subtracting 10, it seems that simple. What about the fork? Uh-oh, that's a zero? I don't know what that is, I can't learn from that one yet. That is a wild, <laughs> a wild number, this is also zero. What if I do zero fork zero? Zero, okay. How about two fork one? One, one fork two, negative one, huh? How on earth did I get 118 from five fork two? That's absurd. Three fork one is five, one fork three is negative five. Three fork two is four, and this should be negative four. Not like I know what that means. Right, maybe if I keep messing with other numbers, let's just stay in the positives here. This is 18 somehow. What about five fork four? I mean, there's se seemingly some subtraction at play. Is this five factorial minus four factorial? I mean, it is, yes. And is four fork three, four factorial minus three fork factorial? It is. Oh, cool, okay, yep. All right, first number factorial minus the second number factorial. How do I get to six, seven, six? Or rather, how do I get to six, six, six? Let's recite the factorials. I got one, two, six, 24, 120, 720, 50, 40, and then it gets in like the pretty big numbers. It's like, <laughs> it's up there, okay? I don't think it goes over 50, 40, but 720 is right there. Okay, 720 minus 666. I should work on that. That's probably like 54. Yeah, well, that doesn't help me. So I could do 644 to get me 696, but if only there was some way to diamond it three times. There's no parentheses function in this game, right? I mean, when you're making equations, you should parenthesize. And frankly, if I do like diamond six fork diamond four, that's gonna give me weird crap like zero. It's just gonna give up because it's two negative numbers in the forking. What if I do like six fork four diamond? Oh, you can do parentheses. I wonder if I could have done it for the previous equation. Either way, this is right. I, I, I believe it did say parentheses are automatic. Although I don't remember if it said how you force parentheses to happen. Either way, I did it, so I can't complain. What is going on here? First guess is like adding up the digits. <laughs> that's a little bit off. You know, in the grand scheme of things, like compared to infinity, that's not too far off from two. What in the ass? Okay, three is six. Oh, well this is factorial. Factorial. This is gonna give me one as I've recently learned. Mm, don't know what this is, could be subtraction. What if it's like three, four, two? That's one. Is this the remainder again? If you divide two by three, you get zero with a remainder of two. Let's do five, four, two, should give me one. Yep, okay, awesome. So realistically, I'm gonna need a remainder of six, six, six. So how I did that last time was 1998, four, 13, 32. This gives me six, 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 but gotta use the diamond somehow. I mean, why don't I just do 1998 fork diamond like eight or even seven? Cause this is gonna give a remainder of 1998. So I could just do that. Fork 1332. That was a weird one. Uh, Well, maybe this one will be a bit more unique. That's the square root of two. You're gonna do it again. Yep, that's square root of three. That's square roots, square roots. Diamond square rooting. What about the fork? 12. Oh God, is that is it that old equation where it's the left number plus the right number times 11? Because they call back the things. They're doing it. They're doing it. Let's see, three, four, five. They're doing it. It's the left number plus the right number times 11. Yeah, so seven, four, three is 33 plus seven, which is 40. Great. I don't hate that they reuse equations, but I think I enjoy the figuring out the equation the most. Real thing is getting to, oh, I got a square root to get 666, surely. And what is 666 squared? Let's ask the regular calculator. 443556, one day I'll remember that. Such heat. 
Well then, oh great calculator, what is 443556 divided by 11? 40323 with a remainder of 3. So, 3 fork 40323. And then you diamond the whole thing. Love it. What do we have here? Diamond 1. Hmm, do I divide by negative 2? It appears so. Yeah, it appears so. So, negative 1332 would get me 666. But, gotta figure out the fork. That's a weird one. 33. 66? Is this gonna give me 99? Of course it is. What about 1 fork 2? 36, huh? Is it the left number times 10 plus the right number times 3? So we could try... Well, 10 for 10. That's not right. This should give me 100 plus 30. 130. Why did I say 10? When I said 10 earlier, I definitely meant 30. Because that does work out. 30, 30. So I've just got to get to negative 13, 32. And 13, 32... <coughs> At least it divides by 3. Isn't that 444? So 44.4. So I can do 44.4 fork. Well, I guess 0. Do a diamond. I'm not quite sure if it matters here. Where did my math go wrong? You know, I guess I never did check one thing. I never did check 2 fork 1. Is this going to give me 36? No, it doesn't give me 63. No. Okay, my original idea is right. Can I just not do math? Is that what's happening right now? 444 fork 0. Diamond. Negative. Ah. Wait, is this non-algebraic? I guess it just occurred to me that it could be. I have not been too thorough on this one, huh? Because it could just be taking each number, multiplying it by 3, and then smooshing them together. Like, if I do 10 fork 3, is it going to give me 309? Oh, that makes a bit more sense. So I guess I could just do 2 fork 2 fork 2. Diamond. Negative. Oh, but I didn't divide by 2. Or multiply by 2. Oh, wait, no, this... This inner resolves left to right. I can't do it. This should be easy. I don't know why I'm not getting this. I think my brain's just tired. Tell you what, I am blanking a little bit though, because getting a 1332 just by smushing numbers together, not easy. Wait a second. Am I, was I overlooking this option, 04444? I was. Wow. Yeah, it's as simple as putting the zero in the front of the number. That should not have taken me as long as it did. But you know what? I guess it's a funny little thing you forget from time to time. Because there we go. Yeah, that's right. Zero in front of a number basically just erases the zero. It's a cool quirk. It's not something I think about enough, clearly. So, let's go to diamonds. Doop. That is unhelpful. How do I get an integer output? Ah. Wait, is 100 going to give me 2? So this is log base 10 of the number. We got logarithms. I haven't had to use those in a while, right? So 1,000 is 3. Logarithm just means if you get 10 and raise it to the output, you get the input. So you almost have to work backwards. 10 raised to what gets you 10? 1. 10 to the 1 power gets you 10. 10 raised to what power gets you 100? 2. 10 squared is 100. So it's just, it's basically exponents, but working backwards. And what about the fork? That's nothing to do with ones. 14. What on earth am I looking at right now? What about one fork two? Is that any different from two fork one? Interesting. Increasing one to two on the right side when the left side is one increases the output by one. And then increasing one to two on the right side when the left side is two increases the output by two. This is interesting i can't observe it with three but if i do four fork one you get 24 and then four fork two would that give me 28 aha so clearly we're adding the multiplication of the two numbers to something that has to do with the left number i mean is it 5x plus xy x being the left number y being the right number i mean that would seem so so five times the first number plus the two numbers multiplied together so if i were to do nine fork let's go four so that'd be 45 plus 34, which is 81. Wow. And the other one's a freaking log base 10. I mean, th that's fine. I think I just got to think about how to get to 666 with the forking. And then I can do the logarithm second. You can also think about it as the left number times the sum of the right number plus one. That's not true. Plus five. That's, that's the one. There we go. Right number plus five times the left number, which I can do with a lot. 
you know, I could do 74 fork four, for example, that gives me 666. So then all you do is 74 fork diamond 10,000. This gets me two, three, four, no, 1,000. I think I was right the first time. Oh yeah, duh, I counted from two instead of one. Yeah, 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 no, I, I was right. And then I told myself I was wrong. You just gotta punch it in right. Listen, I, I'm right. My fingers don't want to admit that I'm right though. My mind is stronger than my body. There we go. <laughs> this is why I play puzzle games. <laughs> my uh, mind's a lot better than my fingers. Let's go. Multiplying by negative two, it, or dividing by negative two, it appears. Yep, that's dividing by negative two. Let's take a look at this. This seems very similar to a previous one where you take each of the numbers, multiply them by three, and then you squish them together. This time, no four and no eight. But I do have six, and I can also do 16. So can't I just do like 22 fork, diamond, 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 negative 16? That works. Way easier this time. Oh, what is happening? The clock strikes six. The test is almost over. The third function, the censored diamond. Definitely need a better name than that. Oh, oh, it, this is a strange example. The sixth prime is 13. Ooh, so one input, one output. It returns the index of a recognized integer sequence. Very interesting. So what is the first thing in the sequence? Sorry. Okay, the second is zero. The third is one. The fourth, oh good God. The fourth is two. The fifth is three. My guess is Fibonacci. It's not Fibonacci. I actually have no idea what this sequence could be. 10? What does that do for me? Eight? Well, right now it looks like I'm just subtracting two, but clearly 34 gets me 232. So where does it start going weird? 15? 44, all right. What about 11? Nine? 13. It goes pretty weird there. 12. Well, this is one less. So 9 is 11. 11 is 12. Or rather, the 11th in the sequence is 9. The 12th in the sequence is 11. And the 13th is 22. What about the 14th? 33. Are we just increasing by 11 now? Because I swear, yeah, so it's 44. Is 20 99? Why are we increasing by 11 now? I'm not going not gonna to complain if we keep increasing by 11. We'll eventually get to 666. No, it's not divisible by 11. Let me just see. How close do I get? At 656. And this is 667. Uh-oh. I didn't learn that one. <laughs> that was the first one and I got it without learning it. Hold on. Are these all palindromes? Ah... That's the one. So the 77th palindrome is 666. I'm glad I got that. I'll do a couple more of these. What's the first one? I mean, they're gonna do Fibonacci at some point. Not this time though. Um, These are what I call triangle numbers. One is one. One plus two is three. One plus two plus three equals six. One plus two plus three plus four equals 10. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven is 28. 666 is a triangle number? Well, that basically means that 666 equals 1 plus the input times the input over 2. So 1332 equals the input squared plus the input. It's basically 36 off, off the top of my head. Because remember, 37 times 18, but then multiply 18 by 2 is 36. So it's basically 36 squared plus 36 is 1332. Divide that by 2, 666. Anyway. 1. Three, six, more triangle numbers? Oh yeah, I think I just gotta do recursive triangle numbers. I believe triangle number eight is 36. So you just do double triangle eight for 666. Oh my God, it's a double triangle number, that's nuts. And two functions at the same time. That's a clean place to end it. I'm excited to pick up the combination next time. It just occurred to me we'll eventually be having all three functions at once, won't we? That'll be fun. I love math, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace.